thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm delighted to have you here, and uh, I want to talk to uh, uh, Mr. Doherty from the DEA. Uh, all of us on this panel uh, were involved in hearings on the Ensuring Patient Access and Effective Drug Enforcement Act, and it passed out of this committee unanimously. I was one of the co-sponsors along with Mrs. Blackburn uh, and Mr. Costello, and that was the subject uh, of a commentary or a report by 60 Minutes in the Washington Post, both respected journalistic uh, organizations. And those of us who supported the bill, and that's all of us here, were very concerned, and we want to get to the bottom of it. And in fact, I've sent a letter to Mr. Uh, uh, Walden, the chairman, asking for a full investigation, allowing the whistleblower to come in, allowing the DEA to get in, because bottom line, we're on the same page. We want to do everything we can to stem the tide of illegal opioids, and we want to pass legislation that by no means handcuffs the ability of your uh, organization to do its job. But I've got a chart here, because I want to ask a couple of questions. The focus of that, of that report had to do with the fall off in the use of immediate suspension orders. And as I understand it, that order was one where pretty much on any uh, suspicion that the DEA had, they could close down a distributor. But if you look at the chart, the reduction went from 65 immediate suspension orders in 2011 down to five. That was a low point, and that was in 2015, correct? And it went up to nine in 2016. So the law that we supported was signed into law in 2016. So here's my question. Unless the effect of the law occurred before the passage of the law, the law that we passed was after there had been already a decline in the use of that tool, one of many tools, by the DEA. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct, sir. So is it fair to say, because I think we need some uh, reassurance on this, that the law we passed, whatever its issues, and I want to get to those, was not responsible for the pre-existing decline in the use of that tool, the immediate suspension order. Uh, sir, uh, to answer your question, the law that was passed in April of last year, um, it's too early to tell what the demonstrative impact of the no, law No, wait. Was. I'm asking something else, because I want to get to that. Yes, sir. But isn't it irrefutable that the demonstrable impact on immediate suspension orders, that those started declining before the law was in effect in 2016. You went from 65 to five before the law had passed. That's correct. So the law obviously was not what caused the decline in the use of that tool. You had many other tools and we're using them vigorously, thank you, correct? We have many tools, you're correct, sir. Yes, we are using Right, them but the immediate suspension order, because this is the heart of the question, and we really have to know. We have to, all of us have to know. That law that we passed occurred after immediate suspension orders had already declined from 65 down to five, right? That is correct. And then after the law was passed, it went up to nine. That is correct. Okay, so we all want to help, and do you have some specific legislative recommendations for our committee that we could take that would give additional authority within the Constitution to assist you in getting your job done? Uh, sir, thank you uh, for that um, follow-up. And let me say that from the diversion control perspective, we use a variety of tools. The tool you mentioned is, a, is an administrative action. and we uh, certainly look forward to working with Congress with Department of Justice Oversight to ensure we have okay. the most up-to-date tools. We really, we really, look, you've got a very important job. We support it. You have recommendations, including any specific things you suggest we should do to amend the law we passed or even repeal the law we passed. Mr. Chairman, I bet I speak for every single member of this committee. We want to know that information because we would take that up immediately. Yes, sir, and DEA shares your concern, and that matter is uh, under um, coordination with the Department of Justice uh, as we speak. All right, we need a date, certain. I mean, time's marching on. This story shocked folks, 
And it's a, and, and rightly so, because everybody in America is just devastated by what's happening to friends, to family, to loved ones, okay? So we're ready to go. And Mr. Chairman, I'll leave it up to you, but we're having a hard time at times getting the responses back. And now that this question is out there, out there about a law where the suggestion is we did harm, not good, I think all of us want to correct that. Correct. So I'll leave it to you. Yeah, yeah Mr. Welch, on behalf of the committee, um, 